Start by rinsing a medium-sized butternut squash. And then do your best to peel the butternut squash. It's a little bit challenging, but just do your best and it's okay if there's a little bit left on the butternut squash. So you're left over with a bunch of the scraps and I chose to save these to make a veggie broth later on and I just place it in a Ziploc bag that I leave in the freezer for when I want to make veggie broth and this way I avoid creating food waste. Another option is simply to compost it. And um, I share my freezer with people that are not vegan, so they might, so you might see some things that are not vegan in there, and that's all right. That's not something that I eat. And start by cutting off the top of the butternut squash, the part with the stem, and you can cut off the part around it because you don't want to waste anything. And then just proceed to cube the butternut squash. And then once you reach the part with the seeds, you can use your hands or a spoon to remove the seeds and you can set these aside. I'll be showing you how to roast these, um, they make a really nice snack. As you can probably already tell, I am very much against food waste, so I try to do my best to use all the different parts of each ingredient. Then in some boiling water, add in the butternut squash. I was a little bit impatient, so I didn't wait for the water to boil, but um, I suggest you do that because then it just cooks for longer. It should only take between 15 to 20 minutes. Um, but because I put it in when the water was not boiling yet, I gave it an extra five minutes. And it's okay if you overcook it a little bit, you're just gonna mash it. So if it's softer, it's fine. Then just drain the butternut squash as best as you can. And I ended up leaving too much water with the butternut squash, I didn't drain enough. Um, so you might be able to see it here in these next few clips, but using a potato masher, just mash the butternut squash as you would with, you know, any kind of potato. Then we're going to go ahead and add half of a jalapeno that's diced. This is optional. Um, if you prefer to keep it less spicy, you can always just leave it out and then stir it in. And then we are adding in some spices. So we're gonna add in cumin, oregano, salt, and pepper. going to rinse and drain a can of black beans. You want to make sure to rinse and drain it so that you get rid of any of the extra salt that it's cooked with and if there's anything else on it.
you can use a colander to rinse it to make it easier. I just chose to do it inside the can because I was a little bit lazy. Then just add it into the burn squash mixture and try to mash some of the beans so that it mixture is a little bit more cohesive, but it doesn't have to be completely mashed. And so with the butternut squash seeds that we set aside, I just added some salt and some pepper. That's it. And then I just spread it on a baking tray to bake in the oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit, which is what the enchiladas bake at, for 10 to 15 minutes or until they start to turn brown. And I just used a jar of enchilada sauce from Whole Foods, but you can use um, the kind that come in a can or in a jar, whatever works best for you. And then go ahead and spread about a quarter cup or less of enchilada sauce to the bottom of a large baking dish. So this is where we will be putting our enchiladas. So to make the enchiladas, make sure that you've he heated up the corn tortillas so that they're more pliable and that they don't break. And add in a spoonful of the enchilada sauce into the center and spread it around. Then add in a couple spoonfuls of the butternut squash filling. Oh yeah, you want to make sure that you don't overfill these because then they'll, it'll be hard. Yeah, a little bit fell off there, but it's all good. It's all part of the process. And then just add it into the baking tray, the baking dish. And repeat this process with the remaining tortillas. So this makes about anywhere between 8 and 14 um, enchiladas, depending on the size of your butternut squash and the size of your tortillas. I don't even remember how much I was able to make this time, but... Um, yeah, just continue until you run out of filling or run out of tortillas. And make sure that you have plenty of the enchilada sauce left and cover all the, enchil the enchiladas on top of the sauce. Save a little bit for after it bakes. And this is an optional step that you can sprinkle on your favorite vegan cheese. And at this point, this um, butternut squash seeds came out of the oven and they were looking nice and crisp. And while I was waiting for the enchiladas to cook, I took some time to work in my garden. And yeah, here's some of my kale. Oh, and now the enchiladas are done. And look at how gorgeous they look. It's not the prettiest food, but trust me, it is so delicious. You're gonna love it. And then I added in, added on top the last remaining bits of this also to add some extra fresh flavor.